I posted a video you never thought would go viral. Probably got like 200,000 views. I had hundreds of DMs on there and they all said, hey, will you show me how to start a junk removal company? How can I do this? Sort of hopping on phone calls with people, but I didn't really know what I was selling. But <laughs> I, I was just listening to what they wanted. Right. And I was like, oh, I can help you with that. You know, I can do it for X amount. All right, I got Kyle Landwehr on the podcast today. This guy is a 22-year-old entrepreneur who has, you know, really built a seven-figure junk business at such a young age and then parlayed that into doing real estate deals and coaching on junk. I've never heard a story like it, dude. Happy to have you here. Yeah, I really appreciate you having me here. Super yeah. pumped. Yeah, dude. So tell the people what you're doing, man, because it's pretty uh, fascinating to me as somebody who loves side hustles and entrepreneurship. Absolutely. So two years ago, super desperate uh, to really make a change with my life. I was making 15 bucks an hour working a nine to five job in the construction industry. And then basically just was looking for a side hustle to actually start to quit that job. Started a junk removal company ended up making $10,000 my ver very first month. And that's when I was like- You were doing the junk, I assume, yourself? You were like- Yeah, me and one other employee. Did, so, you, did you get a truck or something? Yeah, I had a truck and trailer. Okay. It was actually my dad's truck. And then I bought like a $2,000 trailer, did 10K the first month, and that's when my eyes opened up. And I was like, wow, this is exactly what I was looking for. Now I can control exactly how much money I wanna make. So if I wanna work a little bit harder, that's something that I can control and make more money. So started doing that, um, ended up doing probably about, we'll do over 3,000 jobs a year doing that. And then basically five months into the business, broke my ankle, which actually transitioned me into a real estate guy mm -hmm. because I broke my ankle, was forced to work on the business and not in the business. Mm -hmm. So now I had guys out in the field doing the actual labor and I was focusing on getting the jobs, but I also had too much time on my hands. So I started wholesaling and flipping real estate, mm. you know, seeing those opportunities through junk removal. Um, and now I'm coaching people all around the country on basically doing that. That's funny, man. So, I mean, I want to dive into all these different aspects of what you're doing business wise. But, you know, what's interesting to me is when I was flipping couches, it's very similar to what you're doing with junk removal, right? People are just trying to remove this couch, right? They're either buying a new one, they're moving, whatever the case was. And you know, I was able to buy these couches for a good deal, make a profit. But I remember as I transitioned into real estate, I was like, man, this is a great opportunity to go get some deals because these people are moving, right, for many of them. And so somebody is either going to re-rent that house or sell that house or whatever they're doing, and this is a prime opportunity to get a hold of them. And um, I never did it because I, at that point, as I was transitioning out, I was like, I don't even care. Like, I don't care about the couch flips anymore. I'm just fully in on real estate. So with your real estate business, I'm curious, are you getting deals from the junk removal? Yeah. So basically we get calls and it's kind of a little bit harder now that I have, I don't answer the phone calls. So it's a little harder to see the opportunities unless my employees let me know. So I'll have to give them a bonus yeah. for actually seeking those opportunities. But people will call us, say, hey, Kyle, we actually need to get junk removed from this property to get it ready to sell. And so I would actually try to go to those properties. I would jack up my junk removal price so it was less appealing. Mm. And <laughs> undercut yourself. Yeah, so I would, you know, if it was a $5,000 house clear out, I'd say we can do it for eight. And then I'd give them a cash offer for the property and then I'd figure out how to get the money later. And basically most of them will wholesale. Yeah. Because they're not in areas that I'd want to flip in. And then... Um, did a flip here recently. So like, for example, what market are you in? St. Louis. Okay. All right. So for example, we had somebody call us recently and they said, Hey, we need this house cleared out to get it ready to sell. So I went there and it was like a $400 house clear out. Like there was literally no junk. So I said, Hey, we can do this for, um, 600 bucks. They were like, okay. And I said, or I can buy the house for 167,000. They were like, wow, that actually sounds, you know, like a good opportunity. So they let me know like a week later, yeah, let's go ahead and do the deal. So that was my actual first flip. And we ended up doing 67K net on that one deal wow. from a, you know, $300 junk removal job. <laughs> so that's good lead generation. Yeah, for sure. And nobody else sees the, the leads before me, you right. know, for those specific deals. Wow. 
That's crazy. So you were the one, obviously, when you're building the junk removal business, also negotiating with these sellers. Like, what gave you the idea to do it? So when I go to somebody's home and I say, hey, we can we can remove all this junk for five grand. You know, it, nobody wants to pay five grand to actually do that. It's very small margin, I would say, of like people who actually want to pay us to do a house clear up for five grand. I mean, we've been... We've bid them all the way up to two hundred thousand dollars. Wow! So when they wait, wait, hold on. What does somebody need for two hundred thousand dollars? How does that? What are you removing? The house? No, I mean, just like one one example recently. Like we, I showed up. So the city contacted me. They said, "Hey, we need you to go bid this project." Some guy owned multiple houses in this neighborhood, and every single house was like, I mean, it was the craziest thing I've ever seen. Shopping carts. You know, scrap metal, wow. trash. I mean, extreme hoarder. Like, yeah. it should have been on a TV show. Yeah. So it would have took us a month to do, you know, in a crazy amount of employees. I mean, I've never seen anything like it, and I probably won't see anything like it again. <laughs> yeah. So. That's crazy. Okay, so you would tell these people 5000 They're like, nah. Yeah, so then, so I would say, hey, we can do it for five grand, whatever. And I wasn't landing a lot of these deals when I could have made a ton of money if they were, you know, if we were actually sealing the deal. So I was like, how can I land these deals? But all of these were opportunities to actually buy the house. So I saw that opportunity, but I wasn't confident enough to actually try to wholesale it or flip it because I didn't have any experience. But you knew what wholesaling was at yes, this point? Yes, yes. Okay. Seeing videos online, like your videos, other people's videos. Okay. So I saw it, but I wasn't confident enough to actually like go in there and feel confident and do it. So I ended up spending a good amount of money to go to a mentor, learn the wholesaling game, and then basically I felt confident enough to go back, ended up cl closing two deals my very first week or getting them under contract. <laughs> wow. So... And then that guy actually was like, wow, that's a great lead generation technique. And now he's teaching people to contact, contact junk removal companies. Contact junk guys like you. Yeah, so. That's funny, dude. So you end up taking these dead leads, essentially, you're not making money on and make way more money on them. Right, right. Yeah, and it, it was a win-win either way because we're giving them two offers at the end of the day. Yeah. So we're giving them a cash offer for the property. Or we're going to give them a price that was a little more than what we should have said. So we, uh, we sometimes we win both right. or we end up clearing out the property or end up buying it. So it makes sense. Right, right. No, that's super cool. So how many like deals a month is uh, or a year? Is that kind of getting you just like already being in the junk removal business? So we should do about 10 deals this year. And that's not even looking for the deals. And I'm sure I'm passing up on opportunities occasionally since I'm not in the business whatsoever. And ever, like, you know, I have an office manager. I'm not answering the phone calls, booking the schedule. I'm not doing the estimates anymore. So some of those opportunities are probably lost, but we'll do about 10 this year just from that business. We can do that pretty consistent. I wonder, I mean, you said you're going to do 3,000 jobs? Yeah, we'll do over 3,000 jobs this year. Right. So, man, I would imagine, like you said, 10 out of 3,000 seems low compared to like what you could be getting, right? If you could just get, you know, uh, 1%, which would be 30, I would imagine that 1% of those people would convert if there was a better process for it. Right. It, it really just comes down to like a lot of the jobs we're doing are not house clearouts. So it might be, hey, can you remove this couch? Or, you know, they just have a pile in the garage. So a lot of the opportunities actually aren't opportunities to buy the property. But when those opportunities come to actually clear out the home, that's when we're going to try to execute. So that wouldn't be 3,000, we'll right. say. It'd okay. be a different number. Right. Probably like less than 100, I would say. Our true full clear outs yes. where they're going to sell. Yes. That's why they're clearing out. Right. But I still wonder, too, like even those couch removal ones – Maybe there is something there because how many of those people are just moving out? Would you guess? I would say it's pretty slim. I mean, in a lot of cases they are moving, but a lot of people are just buying new couches maybe and they need to get rid of those couches. Right. Or they can't park their car in the garage. So they're getting, you know, a pile removed. Or it's very it's very seasonal. So like, you know, in spring they spring start cleaning. Yeah. Yeah. Spring cleaning. They start removing all their junk. 
Wow. So, and sometimes we'll get furniture that's so good that we'll sell it as well. Yeah, I, I haven't even tapped into the junk removal side. I got a lot of questions about that. I'm thinking through, though, the real estate side and the leads that this junk removal business generates for that business. And so I'm like, okay, man, how do you monetize every lead in the best possible way, right? Because if you get a, let's say, a $400 couch removal, okay, what else does this person need, right? Okay, are they are they moving? Do they need a moving truck? Can I refer one out and get an affiliate? Are they, and could you even turn your junk removal business into also a moving business, which I'm sure you've thought of because it's similar in nature? Um, could you figure out which of those are actually moving out and that's why they're getting that? Like, would a moving company generate more leads than a junk removal company? Like right. So we're actually... We, I definitely considered starting like a moving company, cleaning company, because they all follow each other, right? If yep. somebody's moving, they need to get move out all the furniture, then they have junk, yep. and then, the, then they need their house clean. So we can follow up with all that stuff. But then I was like, I, I don't want to have too many eggs in the basket. So I was like, I'm going to sub out all these jobs. Yeah. So we started subbing out a lot of that work to where to moving companies, demolition companies. Like I was even doing demolition at the beginning, gutting houses. Yeah. You know, if, Somebody would come to me and say, hey, do you gut houses? Like, it was so hard for me to say no. I would just be like, yeah, we do it all the time. And I never did it before. And then I'd have to figure it out. (laughs) So, but I did not like that part of the business whatsoever. So I ended up sourcing it out. And, you know, like today they're doing, they're removing 75,000 pounds of sand. Wow. So basically we're, we have dumpsters on site. And then basically like an, one company has uh, like heavy equipment. They're lifting the sandbags above a dumpster and we'll just cut holes in the bottom, mm-hmm. you know, and drop it in there. So we're, we've been getting into a, like a lot of different type of work here recently. Interesting. So why didn't you do moving? So I don't like moving because like if I say you're moving and you hire us to do it, you're going to be so worried about your furniture. And if I scratch it, you're going to be mad and I'm going to have to reimburse you or something like that. With junk removal, it's so simple to where like, you don't care about your junk. So we're just going to chuck it in the truck and go. Movers have a lot of liability. So rather than starting a moving company, like I would rather add another junk removal location because it's already like something we already know. I'd rather not tap into something else and I'd rather just sub out that work. Right. And, so, have you ever heard of this company called One Eight Hundred Junk? Yeah, yep. So got he does the navy and green. Trucks. Yeah. So yep. he does about a billion dollars a year in sales, but he owns two other businesses as well, and it's like painting and window cleaning. But basically, what the way I look at it is like when he started One Eight Hundred Junk, he wasn't d- dabbling into paint and window cleaning, but he did start a nine figure junk removal business, and then he got into that stuff. So why would I not do that? Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Right. So we already have a system that works. You know, it's very easy to scale if we just add on locations and keep building that team. Right, right. That makes complete sense. So I I, mainly the reason I was looking at it was from the real estate perspective of like, man, people moving, you know, for a fact, that house is going to have some kind of action on it, which is interesting. Um, And and I guess a, a tip for those of you who are listening, you know, you want leads, go partner with a moving company or junk company and, you know, give them a kickback if they get you a deal. Exactly. And we have, we have like bright pink box trucks. I mean, I went all out on this wrap where they really stick out. And on the back of the truck, it's, we have, we buy houses any condition as well. So we'll also get leads from there as well. What's the the moving company called? Or not the moving company, the junk company? Slam Dunkin' Junk. Slam Dunkin' Junk. Yes. Because you just dunk all the junk. Yep, that's in that basically. Trunk. Yeah, basically, <laughs> <laughs> basically. So today's podcast is brought to you by Future Flipper. So Future Flipper is a real estate education company that I founded back in 2018, and since then we have helped thousands of students all across the country learn how to invest in real estate. And it doesn't matter whether you're trying to learn how to flip houses, whether you're looking to wholesale or build your rental portfolio, we've helped everyone in all the different circumstances. This even includes people who have never done a real estate deal. We've helped beginners get their very first deal. We helped other people who have already done some deals scale to doing multiple deals a month. And we've even helped people get to my level, people to scale their business to doing over 100 deals a year. 
learning to become an owner of the company and not be involved in the day-to-day and learn how to delegate and hire employees at the highest level. So regardless of what boat you are in, we can help you out at Future Flipper. We've got amazing events. We've got amazing coaches. I coach directly in Future Flipper, and I would love to help you get to the next level. So all that being said, if you are interested in getting a free consultation call, a free strategy call to see what it's going to take to help you get to the next level, go to futureflipper.com and you can book a call with my team. Once again, check out futureflipper.com to book a call. I know that many of my listeners on this podcast are high income earners in fields outside of real estate. And they always ask me, Ryan, how should I invest my money? Should I go start flipping houses? Should I buy an Airbnb? Should I buy rentals? What do you think? And I always say, look, a better use of your time is continuing to build your business and your career because you're already really good at it. Trying to go figure out how to do real estate deals on your own and managing construction and all that stuff is probably not the best use of your time, but you can still invest in real estate by joining Pineda Capital. We will do everything for you. We will find the deals, we will manage them, we will get them renovated, we'll get them rented out and everything else. All you've gotta do is invest and you're gonna get a return on your money. So if you wanna figure out what is the next deal that you can invest in, you can go to pinedacapital.com. Currently, we're only open to accredited investors only, so if you want to get in on our next deal and you want to get on the VIP list, definitely go to PinedaCapital.com and apply today. Wow, that's a mouthful. Yeah, a little tongue twister. (laughs) (laughs) Okay, so I understand how you guys are getting deals. What I want to know is, how does a 22-year-old kid um, start go from demoing houses and having a trailer and a truck to you know, doing over a million bucks a year in junk. Really? I mean, I I definitely didn't think that I'd be where I'm at today, and we're only getting started. I mean, I've only scratched the surface. So it was really, once I saw that I had the opportunity to make more money and I could control that, it was really just like figuring out how I can scale, building the team to actually do the work, and then focusing on, you know, lead generation. And basically, you know, we constantly hit different plateaus, and I just had to sit there and figure out how to get past the, those plateaus, which was multiple different things. But I also started investing a lot of money in just a, it's so important to surround yourself around the right people, right? Like you think a different way than most people. So if I'm hanging around you or if I'm hanging around different people who are on a different level than me, just like the conversations could make me an extra, you know, few hundred grand a year. It could help yeah. me scale my business. And that's exactly what it's done. Yeah. So, I mean, you started the junk removal two years ago? Yep. Like, walk me through it. Like, it was you. You said you got a buddy to help you out. Like, how did it evolve? So, started it in, like, August of 2020, kind of right around when COVID started. And to be honest, I think COVID made my business thrive because people started transitioning from working in the office to being at home. So, if we work from 7 a.m. to 4.30, they're home all day long. Right. So we can act like it just made it really convenient for us. Plus, they had we're getting stimulus checks and stuff like that. So they were spending more money with us. It was super profitable at the time. Me and one other employee were doing the work uh, five months into the business. That's when I broke my ankle on the job site. How did you do that? So I misbit a job terribly. Like I was doing a job for an investor. Um, I, I was actually doing it for a hundred bucks and we were hauling cabinets. So we were doing hauling at the time too. You were hauling, doing, you did it for a hundred dollars, a hundred dollars. And today that job would have been like at least 700 bucks. Yeah. So, but I did it for a hundred bucks, you know, beginner mistake. And I was just so mad. And I had this one employee on the job site. We were in St. Louis. It was dark out. We're in an alleyway, like, and there was this big cabinet and I'm holding it, you know, <laughs> like this. And he's like, hey, do you need any help with that? I'm like, no. And so basically I just stepped off the box truck, broke my ankle right there. I was Aww. like, I was like blacking out for like literally an hour before I could get to the hospital. I'm like, we need to get this truck back to the lot. Then you guys can take me there or then you can take me there. So that's what happened. And then I was like, I was put in a bind because, you know, I had all these jobs and I couldn't do the work anymore. I I thought that I needed to be doing everything. Right. So basically I asked that one guy, I said, Hey, do you think I've taught you enough to where you can do this yourself? And he was like, he said, I think so. I said, all right, sounds good. And then I hired another employee and the next two months I took my business from like probably 20 grand a month to like 60 grand a month, just laying in bed. And that's really when my life changed because then I wasn't trading time for money. 
Yeah. So I was laying in bed and then my employees would come deliver the money to me. And I was actually just scaling because I was just focusing focusing on marketing and stuff like that, getting more clients. The actual business side. Yeah. Of it. As soon as I was healed up, I hired an office manager to take the calls and book the schedule, stuff I didn't want to do or I didn't think that I should do, you know, because my value was elsewhere. So then I ended up getting an office to treat it more as a business rather than a side hustle. Mm -hmm. Got an office, and that's like w really when we started gaining traction. Right. And then I ended up getting in the real estate, you know, and then everything was changed from there. And then when did you get like the pink box trucks? So I got the pink box trucks probably about six months into the business, I would say, right after I broke my ankle. You already um, you went into branding quick. Yeah, I mean, I wanted to get into it as quick as possible and you know get that brand awareness out there but so i wrapped the truck i actually bought a five thousand dollar box truck i mean it it looked terrible yeah. but that's what my budget was you know right. so i bought a five thousand dollar box truck my first couch flipping truck was 1200 okay or no 1500 yeah. yeah yeah yeah. can't find those anymore no <laughs> it, it, well unless it has you know two wheels yeah. but so i bought this box truck it looked terrible you know drove it for probably a month without the wrap on it Ended up getting it wrapped, but that box truck I bought for five grand, and that's made eight hundred and fifty thousand in the past two years. Just that one truck. Yeah. So it was a really good investment. Yeah. No, that's awesome. So basically, you were forced into being a business owner. Um, it was very similar to me how I was forced into it. You know, I was I was flipping couches, and I was the one doing everything right. And I remember every year. I would leave to go play baseball and I would still have excess inventory. I had to get rid of it. And so Mindy, my wife, would start selling off the rest of the inventory um, while I was gone. And that was kind of like my first taste of an employee, my wife. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and then um, when I got into real estate and I started flipping houses, I realized like, man, I'm not going to stop flipping houses because I have to go play baseball. Like I need to get somebody to go check on these houses, to look at them, et cetera. And so my buddy Nick, who's now my partner at Wealthy Agent, um, was that guy. I go, hey, let me train you. Here's how you look at a house. Here's what you need to look for on the renovations. Make sure we're not getting screwed. You know, here's how you comp properties. You know, here's how you pay contractors. You know, I trained him up for like a month. And I was like, all right, dude, well, I got to go play baseball. I'm going to be gone the next six months. Let's, you know, we're going to be talking every day. And so we did that. And I, you know, I trusted him. And that was my first taste of like, I don't have to do everything, man. This guy, he can manage projects just as good as me. He can go list properties just as good as me. Like, why do I have to do everything? Right. And I think that's most people's problem with scaling is like they think they need to do everything. You know, like a lot of these junk removal companies, the reason why I'm not worried about competitors is because a lot of them are still doing the work. They're, tr they're still trying to scale but they're never going to scale because they're still on the truck. They're still doing everything right. when really you just need to take a step back and be like, okay, like I would rather make a less margin we'll say, and hire the team to be able to do that because that's how I'm going to scale. Right. You know, so, but it was, it was amazing building a team and uh, kind of now I'm at the point where I want my team to like, I want to give them as much opportunity as possible. So that's where we stand now is like, because a lot of them have helped me build the business to what it, what it's at right now. Right. And they've done thousands of jobs. So now I want them to actually go start their own locations. But, you know, that would require them to move. You know, so now we're trying to figure out that situation to actually add locations. Yeah. So tell me about that. Like, I mean, what's the vision for the company? So originally, um, originally the goal was to have a $100 million empire for junk removal. You said that off the bat. You were like, yo, you went from demoing houses and delivering cabinets for $100 to being like, yep, junk, I'm going $100 million, baby. Right. Yeah. So basically, <laughs> that, that was the goal. And I think that's why I've had very good employees is I was like, hey, I'm going to take this to a $100 million company. I want you to be a part of it. Like, imagine if you help me grow this business. Imagine where you're going to be at. So I had a lot of success with those employees because I want to build up the company but we already have a system that works in one area. So if I do a million dollars in a year at one location, why can't I do that with a hundred locations? Do you think that your one location could do 10 million? I think if we branched off into other things, for sure. But I don't, 
I don't think we're capped by any means. Um, I just think that like my time for sure is not into growing it from one to five at that location. This is where I need to step out and have somebody be able to do that. I can tell them what I think will happen to actually get there. But I think if we offered other services like, um, you know, moving. actually going, yeah, moving and cleaning and yeah. all that, like, I think we could easily do, you know, the five to 10 million mark with one location. But my main goal is just to get other locations. And then you can add that to there. all of them later. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So, yeah, you know, make all these junker mill. The main goal is just to get them started. We need to get them started in these other areas, and then they can branch Buy off a truck, and other things. Just go through the process again. But I guess from your perspective, though, it sounds like you're saying, you know, the million bucks in junk is pretty capped at what you're doing. Yeah, I would say one one point five is like you're you're crushing it for sure. I so, like I don't I think most companies, junk removal companies in our area is probably doing like ten to fifteen thousand a month is what I'm thinking. So I mean one eight hundred junk, you said they're a billion dollar company. Yeah. What's their business model? So basically they just have a system that works. I mean it's as simple as junk removal. They have dump trucks, two guys go to the job, bid the job, remove the junk, and they just they have a you know massive brand where everyone knows you know to call one eight hundred junk. So they have fran So basically, I believe he started a few locations, had a system that worked in multiple different markets to where he could franchise, and now he franchises all around the nation. Okay, so they're a franchise. So his his thing is, you know, I got this system that works. You pay me to give you the system, and I get royalties, and you know, set up shop whenever you're ready. Whereas you're not looking at franchising. I mean, I think to get to the $100 million mark, you need to franchise because I just can't. Why don't you privately own them all? Um, I think it'd be a little more simple to franchise, to be honest. Yeah, I yeah. think it would be easier. Yeah. Um, unless I had like a really good team that could execute on that. And I, that might be something I can accomplish through social media by getting people to actually yeah, you know, know about slam dunk and junk, and actually want to start one in their area. And I've, since I started coaching people, a lot of people like I've definitely considered having these people start slam dunk and junks, but it just made me cautious on, you know, if that was the right person mm. to actually start the location. Right, because they're gonna, you know, you gotta make sure that brand stays good with all these different operators. Right. So, yeah, yeah, exactly. So I would like to kind of the goal was to start three to five locations and own them myself and give, you know, part equity to the person who's grown that location and give them incentives to actually grow that business. Yeah. But um, once I have three to five locations that work in different markets, that's when I could bring it to the market to franchise. Got it. I'm sure you've seen The Founder. Have you seen that movie? Yeah. Yeah, I have. Yeah. One of my favorite movies ever. It just cracks me up. Like when he first starts franchising, <laughs> some of these McDonald's are like... I can't remember what they were selling. It was like tacos and like just doing their own thing, selling whatever they want. Right. And I'm just like, man, the quality control of franchisees is that's a hard thing to do. Yeah. I mean, I, you know, I wanted to franchise by now, but I actually like I started talking to somebody and this is I would say this was like also a thing that helped me scale or have a system that worked is reaching out to people who have already franchised businesses and they were like, so what's your culture? You know, yeah. what's your business culture? And I'm like, I never even heard of it. You know, <laughs> they're like, you know, what are your core values? And I'm like, I never even heard of that either. You know, <laughs> so that that's when I was like, wow, I'm nowhere near ready. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, meeting the right people, they really talked about systems and structure that you need to implement in your business. So when I did that, you know, we just kept growing and growing and have an actual system that works. Yeah, I love it. Yeah, I'll have to get you with my business coach, Gary. He was just on the podcast recently. He would be a good person to talk to about getting your business ready to be franchised, all the things you'll be needing. Yeah, I would love that connection. Yeah. yeah. So that's cool. So, I mean, obviously, is the goal still today you, you'd like it to be a nine-figure junk business? Yeah, I would say I've definitely, like... It's so easy to have these squirrels, right? Where you're like, squirrel, because I've made money doing other things to where I've like lost, you know, traction, I guess, doing that. So I would say if I could build a team uh, to be able to actually execute 
properly. That would be the goal. Um, and, you know, buy real estate through those. I mean, if I could perfect that there, you know, we could be flipping so many homes without really a marketing budget, which is amazing. So it'd be really profitable. Um, but I've really got into like the online space of building a brand. And that's, that's like my main focus right now. Interesting. Sounds like you've been watching me. Yeah, I have. <laughs> so tell me about this. So, you know, seeing guys like you, other guys, Grant Cardone, you know, like this is kind of why I started a business was like, I saw these people that were no different than me that were crushing it on social media and their businesses in general. And I really saw the leverage of doing that. And I, I need people to know me. Right. I mean, like, if people know you and you offer a product and you have influence on other people where, you know, you're exchanging value for value, it makes a lot of sense to have that brand. And, um, you know, I just honestly, like it's, I'm desperate to actually like post the content and build this brand because I know that the algorithm is going to get harder and harder and harder every single day. So it's like, this is my main focus. Mm, I love so it. So it's not necessarily like, of course I want to make a lot of money, but like, the money can come later. It's my personal brand right now. Yeah, because you're, you know, you got your junk business making money, right? You don't have to be in day to day. So you can now focus on the personal brand. Yeah. So a year ago, I went to Yacht Mastermind. Austin Rutherford was mm -hmm. hosting it. He was like, hey, you, I actually spent the money to go there to just talk to him and learn, like, how did he build his brand? Right. And I remember talking to him and I was like, hey, man, like I post one picture a year on Instagram and like <laughs> social media. Like, how are you posting five videos a day? So he was like, you got to document the process. And I don't think I really understood what that meant for a while. So I was just like standing in front of the camera, you know, really trying to figure out what my audience wanted to see. Had a ton of haters coming in, you know, and just kept staying consistent with doing that. Um I've got the most traction on TikTok, but really it's just so many people reach out and they're inspired, which really feels good. But also like a lot of people are, you know, asking for business advice, which, you know, I can leverage to be able to create another business. And that's exactly what I did. Yeah. So tell me about the business. So I was just posting junk removal videos. I wasn't, I would say that I wasn't really targeting a specific audience. They're just entertainment, really. Yeah, yeah. I was just posting the videos. You know, I, was, I didn't know anything, really. So I was just posting the videos. And um, I posted a video, which is on my TikTok. And it was like, I basically, it's one of those videos that you never thought would go viral. Yeah. And I just started getting traction. It probably got like 200,000 views, but it had a really good engagement on it. Mm -hmm. And I just, told people what I did and, you know, how many jobs we're doing, the revenue, my age, and a ton of people were hitting me up, like emails, comments, and I was pushing them all to my Instagram because at the time you couldn't DM back and forth on TikTok. Mm -hmm. So I was like, hey, go DM me on Instagram. And those people who actually took time another day to message me on Instagram, I had hundreds of uh, basically DMs on there and I like a couple thousand emails, I would say. And they all said, hey, will you show me how to start a junk removal company? How can I do this? So I s literally, it took me a week to get through all of these emails and everything. It's crazy. And I just said, hey, like, this is what I do or this is what I can help you with. Sort of hopping on phone calls with people. And it was a very low close rate for sure. But I didn't really know what I was selling. But I, <laughs> I, you know, like, I, I didn't have a product. But... I knew that there could have been a product. I was just listening to what they wanted. Right. And I was like, oh, I can help you with that. You know, I can do it for X amount. And I ended up making uh, about $27,000. So I had 27,000 collected with no product. Mm -hmm. So then I was like, okay, I gotta, go, I gotta be a junk removal coach now. And that's <laughs> because I never thought I'd be the junk removal coach, yeah. you know, or, or the guru right now in, in my life. So, but I was really kind of forced into that as well. By the way, you know, so I, I just started a new company called Content Empire, right? And so, you know, our focus is helping entrepreneurs get good at social media. Like literally, you're the guy we're targeting, right? Because you know that social media is going to be important and you know you have to do it, but nobody's really teaching the how to do it as an entrepreneur because there are people teaching how to be a YouTuber, how to be a TikToker but they're not teaching it from the entrepreneur's perspective. They're teaching it from the entertainment perspective, the 
content creator perspective, go viral perspective, but you know, to make content that actually makes sense for your audience and for your business is a different game. And getting those people to actually click to your thing and convert is totally different. So it's interesting you bring this up because you brought up a key point of like, you had a viral video, but you didn't know what to do, right? Like you get a thousand leads, man, that should make some serious coin. Right. If you sure. have the right funnel and systems in the, on the back end of uh, what you just did. And so, so I saw that opportunity yeah. and like I was selling them. So basically people started flying out to me and I would coach them in person and I had to make that product. So like the next week I would create a junk removal product, coach them in person. And I was like, I, w I always asked them, Hey, what, what could I have done better? Like what, what could have made you spend more with me? How could I have provided more value? They told me, and that's when I, I never even heard of the word funnels at the time. So yeah. that's when I got introduced to like funnels. Yep. And I was just like reaching out to people like who can build my funnels? You know, you have funnels. Everybody has yeah. funnels who has different, you know, whatever they're selling. So I ended up paying somebody to build my funnels out, um, which actually just got completed like recently. Mm. It took a few months to do. And um, now we're just really just pushing people into the funnels. And um, by the I way, just, the funnel shouldn't take that long. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it, it I, did. It did. <laughs> well, I, it, it, it does. It can if, uh, you know, obviously it's your first time doing it and everything. But like, you know, to give the example of Content Empire, like I created that funnel. No, actually, I created the entire business, including the funnels, the logos, the branding, the curriculum, the everything in a month. Yeah, that's that's crazy. I, I want to bring this up too. And this kind of like I always think about this. I remember you created a video in the past and you said like maybe you over you were over leveraged in real estate, I yeah. think. And you had you I don't know if you couldn't pay your lenders back or something like that, where you're like, I need to go make some more money. And yep. you ended up hosting an event. Yep. Made like 50 G's that weekend or something. I yep. always think about that. People over like people think that it's so hard to make money when it's like Maybe you you never thought that you can make that money, um, but you really can just offer something, and there's so many people who would end up buying or you know really enjoy to meet you, or you could host an event. There's so much value that you can provide to these people, mm -hmm. and I always think about that, and that's when I offer like that's when I really wanted to get into the the coaching is because there's so much opportunity in that space, especially if you have a lot of people that actually reach out to you, right. So one thing I think that you've got going for you is, I mean, obviously you're super young and successful, but you're in a niche that I don't know anyone a part of, right? Like junk removal is one of those things that I think is a real golden goose opportunity um, for many reasons. Number one, nobody's doing it, right? And very few people are documenting it, right? Two, the content around it's going to be super entertaining, Right. People have been watching, um, you know, like storage wars and like hoarders, hoarders, like yeah. people like junk and seeing I forget there was this other show I used to love watching um, where these two guys would go into houses and they try to buy stuff and flip it. I can't remember what it's called. The number one question I get asked by entrepreneurs is, Ryan, how do I create a personal brand like you have? How do I start monetizing social media? And I've been asked it so many times that I said, you know what, it's time to start a business and teach everyone exactly how I've done it. If you wanna learn how I've been able to grow my social media following to 1.7 million followers in just two years, and you wanna learn how we've gotten over 500 million views and turn those views into over a million dollars a month in revenue, then Content Empire is for you. You see, there's a lot of people who are teaching how to you know, go viral on one platform or how to run paid ads or funnels, but nobody has figured out how to organically merge the two. Most people think it's pay to play. But if you want to learn how to get organic content, build a fan base, build people who want to buy your products who don't need to be sold, then I want you to go to contentempire.io, apply for a free strategy session with my team. We will teach you how to build your business on social media and monetize. So once again, go to contentempire.io and we'll chat with you. One of the most overlooked aspects of running a business is who you're using for your bookkeeping, accounting, and your taxes. Unfortunately, most investors go the cheap route and they end up paying for it in the long haul. 
They're not properly keeping books. They have no idea how much money's coming in, how much money's going out. They're really just running off of their gut instead of running on hard data. This is where TrueBooks comes into play. TrueBooks is my CPA firm where we have helped hundreds of investors and small business owners all across the country get their books dialed in, pay less in taxes, and take advantage of every deduction that you are entitled to. Most CPAs, it seems like they're working for the IRS. We are not that way. We want to make sure that you get everything you're entitled to. So if you wanna learn about how we can help you out today, go to truebookcpa.com. Like I said, we've helped out real estate investors, we've helped out crypto investors, entrepreneurs, influencers, you name it. We have helped them and we can help you. So go to truebookcpa.com. People love just flipping normal everyday items because it's relatable. That's why couch flipping took off for me because everyone's like, oh, I could flip couches. Yeah. Whereas real estate, people still think they can do it, but it is like a high barrier to entry where you're like, I don't know if I can afford it. But everyone's like, yeah, I could flip a couch. You know? Yeah, it's a it's super easy side hustle that people think that they can a- actually do. Yeah. And it doesn't take high startup budget. You know, you can literally get a couch for free. Yep. Or you can get paid to remove it and then sell it. Exactly. So for you, I think having this niche that nobody really is a part of at least creating content for two it's super relatable to your point all those people that messaged you don't currently have a junk removal business and they're like i could do that freaking i'll go pick stuff up and go make a couple thousand bucks that's cool right so and then three if you have the coaching product teaching those people how to do it i mean dude i think that is a i mean that's a seven figure funnel right there yeah yeah i i definitely believe that we're in the near future before the end of the year we'll be doing you know six figure net days with with everything combined yeah um but yeah i mean there's really nobody who does it it's just like who is interested in junk removal so like and it's so crazy that certain videos that you post attract different audiences where the video could go viral, but it doesn't mean that you can monetize that right. video or that audience to where I truly think that like if I was on the job sites more, which I probably should be, you know, I could film like we did a, a apartment clear out recently and there was like, you know, it was an eviction. So basically they open up the door. Hey, you're getting evicted. Cockroaches flying out the door. You know, the lady left meat out all over the place. Like that would be really good content. Mm-hmm. Hazmat suits and stuff like that. But when I post a video like that, it doesn't scream. Oh, I I want to start a junk removal company. People are like more interested in just seeing the actual house clear out or you know just the hoarder situation. So where like you posting a video like that, it's gonna get you followers. But it's hard to monetize that type of content. Yeah, I mean, my belief is you have to always have a mix of both, right? Like, if I make a video about Joe Biden and whatever, right? Like, that's probably not going to make me money because it's going to get just a wider range of people, yeah. right? Pissed off people, people who love him, whatever. And so that the point of that video is not necessarily to... I guess, make money or funnel anything into that video. It's just like, hey, the more eyeballs that my channel or my page gets, the better, because then they're going to go see a video that does have purpose, right? Where it's like, okay, here's how to flip a house. Boom, 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 go here. So yeah, I think um, you'll find that out. Like that, I think both need to exist. And I also Mm -hmm. think even for me, um, I've said this before, but you know, I don't go to many of my properties anymore, right? It's just not even part of my day-to-day, right? I haven't been to one of my flips in a long time. The only time I go to my flips is if I specifically go there to film a video because I'm like, this is a cool flip. Let me go film a video and talk about this. And even then, I haven't done them in quite a while. But um, I know if I was there on the day-to-day more regularly, that type of content would hit way better. Yeah. Yeah, and it's... I try to get my employees, like I try to give them an incentive to actually get the videos for me, yeah. but it's very hard to actually get the videos and especially get the videos that I want or the In quality. the right way. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And, um, you know, usually I'll tell them like, hey, I'll give you a bonus. Like if the video ends up doing well, I'll give you a bonus, but I still haven't been able to get the right videos to actually, you know, monetize it or be able to give them that bonus. So from September, 
last September, knowing nothing about content whatsoever, you know, posting new videos every single day, not not knowing how to actually get more followers and get the right people to my audience. Like, what would you say? What do you think that I should do? What do you think is some good advice for myself? Um, <laughs> number one, it's join content empire. That's my number one advice to people now. Before it was always like, well, you could do this, this, and this, because I didn't have a way to um give them truly what they need. Because I mean, here's the deal with with content in general, right? What works today is not going to be what works three months from now, right? Every platform has whatever's trending at that very moment. It's funny, like I look at YouTube Shorts. It's been around for like two years now. When it first started, freaking sucked. Nobody really knew how to use it. YouTube didn't even know. Then during some period last year, probably around right now last year, um, it just was exploding. YouTube was promoting it like crazy. I started posting reels. I had my biggest month ever in YouTube growth that year or that month. It was like 30,000 subs. I was like, dang, dude, reels are where it's at. Or not reels, shorts. Shorts are where it's at. And then literally just one day they stopped getting views. And I was like, what the heck is going on? Shorts were the best. And it's just like for months, no views. Then I hear in the grapevine, hey, shorts are back. And, you know, we start doing it. And then all of a sudden, yeah, I'm like, dang, shorts are back. Like they're crushing again. Like let's post as many as we can. And TikTok is the same way. TikTok's going through a change. Instagram's going through a change. And so my point is like, and the reason why I'm such a big, ad, well, why I created Content Empire and why I'm such so bullish on its success long-term is because of the fact that social media changes so much that you basically have to be in it yeah. <laughs> to capture all those changes as they're ongoing. Because we, for myself, are having to do it all the time. And it's not like I'm being coached by, like I have friends in the industry, right? So I hear all these things and what they're seeing with themselves. And then I apply it to myself, test it. And then, you know, basically we'll give it to our students, right? But for those who aren't, and by the way, if anyone's interested, it's contentempire.io if uh, you want to go apply. But for those who want today's answer of what you would do, okay, a guy like you, you just started last year, you're taking it serious. My biggest advice to you in particular is you should be filming at the sites. I think that's going to make you go viral. It's not you sitting like how I sit and giving general business advice, right? People aren't going to go to you necessarily for business advice because even though you've accomplished a ton as a 22-year-old, they're still going to say, well, I would still probably rather just listen to Ryan or Hermosi yeah, exactly. or whoever, right? These guys who have done it longer and have more success in business. So you would differentiate yourself by being at the sites and being like, well, those guys don't do that, right? Like I got different stuff I'm doing that's completely different, right? So I would look at what makes you unique. And to me, that's the easiest thing that makes you unique. I'd just be documenting everything. And I'd be like, and I, and I would talk about numbers. I'd be like, yep, so we're going to do this job for, you know, $2,000. Here's my cost on the job. You know, I've got my employees. They're making 12 bucks an hour you know, boom, boom, boom. We got our truck, our fuel. Yeah. You know, so I'm going to net whatever 50% on this job. Right. And I think people would love to see that. Yeah. That's definitely a good point. I need to implement that more. I'm just like, I look at my time and I'm like, I need to, I need to be doing this or this. And I actually had people post in the content for me. So I'd give them, we would sit down for like a day and I'd film 87 videos and then they would go ahead and post the the content for me. And it's just like, I would look at every single video, it'd be like 200 views, 500 views. And I'm just like, I need to figure this out. And it's crazy because the same video on Instagram could get 10K views and then it gets 200 views on TikTok and then 5,000 on YouTube. But, and so I'll tell you this too, and I'm guilty of this. Mr. Beast talks about it. You know, I just had this guy, Phidias, who's big on YouTube in here a month ago. And... Phidias told us the same advice that Mr. Beast always tells us, and I've always ignored it. Phidias is like, Ryan, if anybody knows who he is, he's like this. I forget where Phidias is from. Um, yeah, he's he's from, um, I don't even know. I don't even want to say where he's from because I don't know. But um, he's a super funny kid. He's like 22 years old. I think he's close to a million subs now on YouTube. He just does extreme crazy stuff just like Mr. Beast. 
Um, but he goes, Ryan, you should do less YouTube videos. Okay. You do too many and just put super intense focus on one video, have a good idea executed that, you know, is going to go viral. Just do that one video. And I still haven't taken his advice from Mr. Beast's advice. Cause I just kind of do like a video every day. I go yeah. quality or I, I, I try, I mix quantity and quality in like volume. Right. And for me, it works. It's got me to where I'm at today. But I can tell you, they're right. If I were to put more focus on just creating one video, I would get significantly more views on that one video. Now, the big problem would be, and why I'm hesitant to do it, is how much, I guess, for my businesses would that one video make, right? Like, I don't know. You know, if you go get a million views on kind of a random video versus 10,000 views on a very targeted video that's relevant to my audience and my businesses, what's going to make more money? Well, I don't know. I mean, definitely a million's got a lot. So who knows how many of those people convert. But, you know, I think about that. And once again, it's like I think there's a mix of both that can happen of, man, putting a lot of effort into thinking through one good video because it will take me probably more time to make one really good video than the time it takes me to put out a video every day because a lot of them are repurposed. They're just there. It's easy. Right. Um, but, you know, those those videos that I do that way are never going to get viral results. So do you think that, so I've been like testing the quality and the quantity, you know, a little of both. Do you think that I should be getting a camera guy with a nice camera so the quality is really good, who's editing it with the subtitles and all that? Or do you think it's something that I can do with my phone? Um, no, I think you should still have nice quality for okay. sure. Um, but I think you would just put effort into being on the field, in the field. Like I think... That's the key. If you filmed at the field and you came up with like a structure of like, hey, look, we're going to go here. We're going to film one. This is how I did it. Whenever I'd go film a house, I would go film for a YouTube video. I'm like, I know this is going to be a 10, 15 minute video. I'm going to walk through the house. This is the structure. Boom. Um, and then after the fact, I'm going to go and film like four TikToks and just strut like point out things in this house and maybe make a recap of the entire video in like one minute, right? Right. <sighs> to me, that will be a far better use of your time for what you do. I mean, like, look, if you spend, you said you've made 80 videos, you know, for a month, right? It takes you all day. If you went all day on a site, I guarantee you get more views. I'm going to put it to work. <laughs> to test it. I, I'm like certain it will get more views. Yeah, and I... I think I'm definitely guilty of like just knowing that that it'll probably get more views, but I'm just like so focused on other things. I'm like, all right, I'm not going to go to the job sites. And a lot of times there's a lot of customers on the job site. We're actually going in their home. So like, I don't want to go in there with. Well, you strategically pick which yeah, ones you can go in, right. right? Like where you're like, yeah, this is going to be an interesting one. Customers cool with it. I'm filming. Right. And I think too, the beauty of, you doing that video is it actually is going to make you a lot of money <laughs> mm -hmm. because you doing junk, pushing them to your junk removal coaching will 100% be relative to what you're teaching for sure. And, you know, really the point of the video should be like, look, this is my junk removal business. There's a lot of money to be made in junk. You want to learn more, go here. Um, whereas when I think about like these videos, for instance, my couch living videos always do good. My side hustle videos, they always crush, right? So like I'll film videos for Turo and different things and they always do good. Car flipping. I, and I personally like doing it just for fun. Like it would be cool. If you were in Vegas, I would totally film a junk removal video with you because mm -hmm. I think it's a great side hustle. Um, but it there's nothing to sell. Like it's like, yeah, hey, subscribe. And you know, that 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 will convert into things in a long haul. If they become a good, you know, a loyal subscriber or follower, they'll see other stuff and they'll be like, you know what? I think I could flip a house. Right. And that that's kind of what happens there. Yeah. Usually what I've seen is like people might 
they might follow you today or like your video today, but they're not. They're not. They're gonna watch your videos for six months before they actually turn into a buyer. And I think that's a, everyone's issue as well. Is like, you know, when they want to make a transition from doing doing business to actually making content, it's like they want to monetize day one. It's just like. I feel like you just got to focus on getting the content out there and yeah, you can't focus. On, and you know, when everyone listening, I'm talking from the financial perspective because that's just kind of what we're talking about. But you got to remember when you're making content, it's value first and foremost, man, if I can give value and ask for nothing in return, because by the way, you know, 90 plus percent of my content, there's never an ask. Mm -hmm. It's simply just content and value. And when it makes sense, I'll talk about something, right? We're talking about content. Okay, yeah, I'll mention Content Empire because it's relevant to what we're talking about. But, you know, at the end of the day, um, you know, all your content should just remember, be about the audience that you're attracting, how you can help them, what's going to be valuable to them. And in turn, if you're attracting these people who are interested in what you're doing, they're going to buy from you at some point. Right. Yeah, no, I... I'm really just like, I'm at the point where I'm thinking so big that I'm tired of making the small numbers that I am right now is the way I'm looking at it. And it's like, I just really need more eyeballs to actually scale what I'm doing because I think I did, you know, I just need more eyeballs. So like right now we'll do sub a hundred thousand net with, you know, the coach social media really right, in right. general, and, um, definitely a good amount of income coming off that, but it's like, everything's organic. You know, so I just started tapping into paid ads. So now I'm trying to figure out, you know, how much it costs to acquire a customer. And I'm I'm literally just how much is um your offer and what is it? So we have two offers right now. We have a 5K offer. Basically, what people get is an online course that there, there's like 400 hours into it of basically I give them the foundations of what they need to know in order to start a junk removal company, all the lead generation techniques systems and structure resources like who i use for marketing i mean i made it, i went all out on it and then i also have like a private facebook community to where they can all you know hey what would you guys bid on this you know like ask each other questions right that's a five thousand dollar offer but i try to make the so the offer so good that they can't say no right or mosey. so yeah exactly so i say if you don't make your money back i'll give you a hundred percent refund right because i know it works everywhere but, you know, the people have to put in the work. So that's a $5,000 offer. And that's for the people who really want to do it themselves. And, you know, that's something that they can access today. And I also have a $12,000 offer to where people come come out to my office, one on many, you know, coach them in person uh, for one day at my office, they can see my operations, we have like, you know, I walk them through the office, we have different like bidding sections to where, you know, I'm like, hey, what would you charge on this? Right. And then so I make sure that they're an expert at like actually bidding jobs before they go. Right. They get the online course, they get the Facebook group. And then the most valuable part is biweekly coaching calls for a year. Right. So basically like every two weeks we're going to hop on a call. And really, I, th I think that's the most valuable thing because you could give somebody 100 steps to be a millionaire and they'll only do 50. I don't know why, but that's just what happens. That's what I've seen. But when you actually keep people accountable and hold their hand along the way, they're going to get the best results. So, so this is the 12 or the 5? That that's the 12. Okay. Got it. So a few things I would say, having built out many different coaching programs and different niches and um, seeing what resonates, what gets customer success and all that stuff. Um, you know, I think the 5K offer needs um, coaching with it. I mean, honestly, to me, what your 12 K offer is, is what I would normally charge 5 K for. Okay. Um, you know, it'd be group zooms. Uh, for instance, I'll just tell you what content empire is since it's, it's relevant. Content empire is three zoom calls a week. Um, so it's two zooms that are curriculum based, meaning, Hey, this call, we're talking about TikTok. this call. We're talking about equipment. This call we're talking about, um, scripting this call, we're talking about thumbnails and titles. So they're very structured and like a very right. detailed part. And then the third call of the week is submitting your videos and we analyze them. So you're going to submit your video. 
we're going to tear it apart like anybody, yeah. all in the group setting. Mm -hmm. And that way everyone can learn of right. what was good, what was bad, blah, blah, blah. So they get that three times a week. And um, along with that, we have a course, um, which another thing for you, you said that your course is like 400 hours. Yeah, I put a lot of time into No, like for them to take it, it's not 400 hours. Okay, I was going to say. I put 400 hours okay. into building it. I was going to say, holy crap, nobody's yeah, going to watch gonna, that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah okay. All right. So, <laughs> you know, we have a course. We got all my processes or templates and, and different things. And, um, you know, it's a year long. So that's essentially like our lowest tier program, which... Um, I'm not going to say on here how much it is because it's always going to be changing as time goes on and we got special launch pricing and stuff, but you know, that would be our low tier program, um, which isn't even low tier, by the way. But with that, they have the option. Every 90 days, we're going to do an event here at my office, one day event, just like you, where they're going to see this studio that you're in right now. We're going to show them how we film, how we do everything right. and um, you know, to create content at the highest level. And That'll be like a thousand bucks. Like anybody can buy a ticket, come out for that day, right? So that's that. Our highest ticket, which is significantly higher than your 12K, is we are going to work with you on an individual basis. And we are going to um, meet with you bi weekly, like you said, but on the individual level. So we're like, hey, Kyle, you know, what are your goals? Like, let's, let's go over what your goals are, right? And very similar to what I've already kind of just did with you on air without even knowing it. Right. I'm like, okay, tell me how you're making content now. What's the offer? What are you trying to do? All right, here's what I would do. I would go dedicate that one day to the job sites. I would do X, Y, Z. Right. Boom, boom, boom. Cool. That's your homework. Let's test it. Two weeks later, let's see the result. Okay, cool. You know, we've tested it. You need to tweak the thumbnail. You need to tweak the title, the wording. Hey, I don't like what you did here on this video. Like, had you put a jump cut here? Had you put a subtitle here? Right. Had you hooked it better here? It would have got a better result. Test it. And, you know, over time, it ends up being tested, tested, tested. And, you know, you will grow because right. there's one, I can 1000% guarantee if people do what we tell them to do, they're growing. There's no other way around it. Um, but we, we can't work with everyone on an individual basis. So that one's... Um, more high ticket. And those people also get access to um, the office days unlimited for whenever we hold them. Right. And um, we also build out their team for them. So we will give them the editors, we'll give them videographers, we'll give them everything they need. So they don't have to go procure their own. Right. That's we already nice. have them under our like not umbrella because we're not even making money off. We just know who's good and does it the way we want it done. And then we just set them up. Okay. So those are our two tiers of offers, just to give you some reference. Yeah, yeah. So what I get out of that is I'm probably, you think I'm charging too much for actually getting a lot of people in there? Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, yeah, and I think the way that I looked at it was like, if I'm going to show you something that has made me over a million dollars, yeah. why would I charge two grand or five grand? No, and I'm with you, right? Like, trust me, content has made me crazy amounts of money right? right and so for me to charge less than 10 grand you know to teach you how to go make millions is like to your point a deal you can't refuse right you're like why the heck would i not buy that's stupid and that's the point right and even with future flipper it's like yeah future flipper i've made millions of dollars doing what i teach our students last year we had 19 people make over a million dollars this year we should have a lot more too wow and I say that because they're facts. That's just what's happened. And, you know, could we charge more? Like, is the value there? 1000% the value's there. Like, you should pay me 100 grand if I could help you make a million, right? But we always want to find that equilibrium where it's like, yo, it's so, like, this is such a deal that I'm dumb not to do it. Right. Now, granted, you don't want it too cheap where it's like your business isn't making money. You're now getting too many people so you can't fulfill that's why like our our individual one is much higher price because it's like look if we're going to work with people on a one-on-one -on -one basis we can't take everybody right right so my point is to you if i like looking at your offers i would say to actually make it simple i wouldn't even have two offers okay most people like you have one offer and i have two like it's like i have two at this point but one 
is good enough, in my opinion. I okay. think you would be good enough merging it into a course, you know, a weekly Zoom call. Like, I think once a week is fine for what you do. Maybe even two a week if you can handle that kind of volume. Like, personally, I like two a week. So if, if I, okay, if I had no preconceived idea, and I'm already giving you uh, the consultation, this is how I'd build your offer. I would have your, your um, course. I'd have your group. I would have two Zooms per week. Now, they could be curriculum-based. They could be one's curriculum, one's Q&A. Right. Right? But do it two times a week. Um, the office visit, they could pay extra for it for whoever wants to attend and, you know, whatever. thousand bucks, two thousand bucks. Who who knows whatever the price is, right? And then you just have this program, and I would charge anywhere from five to 10K for that program for a year. That's how I would do it. Okay. I completely hear what you're saying, and it almost makes more sense for me too, because like I would rather do everything online, especially in a group setting, because it's easier to scale for my time rather than, you know, like the way I started was having one person come out at a time. Yeah. So I actually haven't had a group setting yet in person. Yeah. Because everyone's came out one by one. Yeah. And I would just say too, having one offer makes it way easier to sell for your sales team or whoever, right? There's not choices. There's not anytime you add confusion into it. It's like, no, this is it. This is the only way to get it. I don't sell the course by itself. I don't have any, like you can buy this or not. Right. Like I used to sell courses by themselves and I stopped doing it because I realized people were like now confused. Should I just get the course? Should I just get this coaching or that coaching? Maybe I should just wait for the event. Like that's how they think. And when you're like, nope, this is it. Yeah. You could buy this or not. Right. You're leaving less options for them. So I know you want to wrap up here soon. So I want to ask you a few more questions. So I see you running a lot of ads here recently. Mm-hmm. I don't know exactly what you're selling or what the what the ticket price is, but like how how much would you say you're spending to, just to acquire like a high ticket customer? Yeah, so I've had many consultations with other people who have been running ads way longer than me, people who have spent hundreds of millions on ads. And when you're in high ticket, it's interesting because a lot of people are okay breaking even on acquisition or even losing money. Like they're okay doing that because they know the lifetime value and in some kind of upsell into it, they'll make their money. Okay. Right? So they might have something that's $500 thing, a thousand dollar thing. And they, they cost them a thousand bucks to get them in the door. And they're hoping that eventually they buy something else. Right. Right. We don't do that model, at least as of today. Um, like I said, we're very simple. We just have two products and there's like our low ticket, which is still high ticket. Right. And there's like basically really high ticket. And, um, our, Two different ways of looking at the return are ROAS on cash collected, return on ad spend, and then like the contract value, right? And so a good, not good, but a minimum that many people who spend a lot of money on ads will say is if you can get 2x cash collected, that's good. Because if you spend a thousand bucks and you make two, you've covered your ad spend, you've covered a lot of your expenses, and you know, if they're on a payment plan or something, you're going to make money after that too. So right now we're around like three X cash collected. Okay. So it's really good cash collected because, you know, a lot of these people take payment plans. And so it's really like if, if the payment plan goes all the way through five to six X return, which is phenomenal. Right. So do you recommend, because I think that I could close a lot more deals if I were to offer a payment plan, but I'm more looking for Cash up front. Yeah, I mean, I would I would definitely offer a payment plan. At, at at a level of under 10K, like you're saying, we do two pay max. What, like two payments? Yeah. Okay, okay. Yeah, and if you want a payment plan, it costs more than an upfront payment. Mm-hmm. So, you know, in, in your case, let's just say it's $8,000, right? So you could say, hey, well, it's um, 8,000 if you pay up front, or it's 9,000 if you want a payment plan two payments of 4,500. Okay. And do you do that like in 30 days or? Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. That makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. Right now. So again, we're like just from my organic audience, which is not big whatsoever. We're definitely, when I post testimonials, we've been getting a good amount of people that reach out and sign up, but I'm thinking so big that I'm wanting to scale. So I tapped into the 
TikTok ads and we're getting ready to do Facebook and Instagram. Um, and kind of now we're just like they're booking calls with us and now we're getting on a lot of calls, but we're not closing anything. Yeah, so I don't know that, that cash collected. That's a collected. whole nother, like, trust me, dude. It took me years to get good at ads. Like, I hired multiple companies, got no return, and relied purely on organic, where we were doing, you know, multiple six figures just organically. And the moment I found, I started to master ads, not only with the ads, but the offer, the sales process, the funnel, the follow-up, mm -hmm. the qualifying. There's a lot that goes into it. Then we started doing seven figures a month. And okay. that was, that's a whole nother ordeal. Right, right. Yeah, too much for the time we have here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that, that, I mean, it's taken me years and it's not even that I could teach. And we're going to talk about that stuff in Content Empire. But even like thinking, man, ads and everything, I could go on and on for days about, man, sales, ads, all that stuff. But I think it first just comes down to, I don't even think you necessarily need to worry about paid ads today. I would refine your offer, refine your sales pitch and all that. Once that's refined, then you start putting money towards it. Right. Once you've got a proven way. And that's how we did it. Right. Okay. And obviously build my audience. Focus yeah, on the content. Because look, you don't need paid ads if you get free views. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Higher profit margins. 100%. Dude. Yeah. Well, I'm definitely going to implement going to the job site now. And I, I'm almost positive that I will get a lot more traction on there and people will be interested because sometimes we do. You're not almost positive. I'm 1,000% <laughs> okay. positive. I know it will work. There's no right. doubt about it. And I think like it'll be very interesting and eye-opening for people because like sometimes we do curbside pickups. I, I the, would watch it. I would watch everything you're saying. Now you giving advice, like I give advice, I might not watch because I'm like, yeah, whatever, dude. I'll just watch whoever. Right. Yeah, you have a higher reputation for me. I mean, I... You could provide a lot more value than me, so, which is not going to bring you to my page to to learn something. Well, and two, like junk even, removal. Even yeah, even for me, I'm like, man, I want to go watch Hormozy or Cardone or mm -hmm. Andy or Ed Milet. Like, you know, these are the people people watch for that. But you know, there's still definitely a market for like, oh man, dude, this guy's 22. I want to hear he has to say. I'm 22. Like, I don't, I can't relate to what Ryan and these guys are saying because they're just so far away from where I am. So there's still a huge market for that, by the way. But I'm just saying, this is the viral market that mm -hmm. nobody, you don't have to compete with anyone. Right. So I think it's great. Yeah, there's literally nobody doing it. So no. I need, uh, I'm going to get back to the MGM and start crushing it here. All right, I'm going to start watching it. Well, dude, I appreciate you coming out to Vegas, man. I think your story's inspiring. Guys, go follow, or follow Kyle. If you're looking for a side hustle, junk removal might be the thing. And uh, you might be getting into a better program than uh, you would have before he met. So, yeah, thanks for having me here. I really appreciate it. Yeah, appreciate you, man. All right, we'll see you guys later. Peace. Hope you enjoyed this episode of the Wealthy Way podcast. If you got value, there are two things I want you to do. The first is go to wealthyway.com and get access to all of our free stuff. You can download our courses for free. You can use the Wealthy Way Planner for free. You can subscribe to our newsletter. All of it's free. It is such amazing value. I want you to go take advantage of that. The second thing is if you could go to Apple and leave a five-star review, or if you're watching this on YouTube and subscribe, that would be amazing. It would mean a lot to me. In fact, if you leave a review, I might just shout you out on the next episode because we are reading those. So definitely check it out. And thanks for watching.